Hey guys, welcome back to the Lansco video podcast. Um, here with Matt Lynch to talk about the deer that he shot second shotgun season here just a, a week ago or so. So uh, again, Matt Lynch's deer uh, a couple weeks ago. Going to bring him in to chat about that. So uh, let's bring Matt in. Matt, uh, thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Okay, so uh, give us a sneak peek real quick of the deer. Sure. Yeah, this is. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. All right, this is. This is him right here. Nice. Clean, clean 10 point. Okay. So let's come back to it. Um, cause I, I have chatted with Matt about it a little bit, but I don't know. Um, I don't have the full story either. So I'm kind of learning as you are. So give us the rundown. Where did you, where'd you shoot it at? Sure. Yeah. This is a, uh, 430 plus acre farm that we hunt in McLean County. Um, pretty close to Woodford County, actually almost on the border of it. Um, it was a uh, an all day sit. This is a farm I've not hunted all year long. Um, we kind of like it that way because it's kind of our refuge. We like to let the uh, pressure build in the areas around there, so these deer kind of all filter into this place. And you know, when the time is right, we kind of make our move to go in there. And uh, so I went out. It was Sunday of first shotgun season, and I sat in a blind uh, overlooking a big field. Um, you know, that's out there. And I knew I'd be seeing, you know, some deer while I was out there. It was just a question of, uh, if they were going to be in range. Cause usually I see a couple big ones at least every time I'm out there. So I decided for an all day sit and in the final, I think it was final 15 minutes. Uh, you know, this guy popped out at about 20 yards following some does. So did you, say, well for me. did you say first season Did I screw that up? Was it, was it the last day of the first season or was it second? It was, it was, it was the, uh, we just had second season this past weekend. I shot this one the last day of first. Okay. Season. I messed that up. So you shot it only a few days after Pudic. Didn't he shoot his first season as well? He did. I think he got his on Friday. Okay. On day, so. Okay. So give us the um, stand location. So did you know this deer was there? Is this one of them that you were after? Um, I knew the deer was in the area. Uh, we're pretty close with some neighbors out there. I'm, I'm buddies of um, the the neighbor to the, it would be the north. Um, they own some ground up that way. And you know, they had some pictures of him. Uh, I knew he was in the area, but it's a little far away from where I was sitting. I kind of bank on uh, the fact that this uh, field that I sit on butts up to, uh, you know, some sanctuary type areas, some thick timber, uh, lots of CRP grasses for them to cruise through. So I, and it's, the corn had just been cut, uh, would have been like a day before I got out there. So I knew given that all these factors, you know, were in play that uh, there would be a lot of deer in the field. It was just a question. Like I said, it's a big, big field. It was a question of whether or not I could get them close enough. Okay. How big? Were you talking like five acres, two acres, 50 uh, acres? No, I, th <laughs> I think this, uh, this portion of the farm that I was sitting on, it's approximately 190 acres. And this, this bottom area that I sit in is uh, roughly 90 acre uh, cornfield. Okay. So you can see most of it, but just because something comes out doesn't mean you can shoot it. It has to be in the right spot. Exactly. You know, I can see uh, to the east, I can look out about 500 yards and see everything that's in the field. I can look to the, uh, the south and see for quite a ways. Uh, it's to the north where there's a lot of timber and then behind me to the west where there's a lot of thick stuff where they pile out of and uh, just kind of hope that they, they work their way out of that area as opposed to coming from the east, you know, when they're 500 yards away. It's a little harder to to get them to come 500 yards than it is, you know, a hundred for when they're coming for sure. out of the. Out so of the how far did he pop out? Yeah, he came from actually just, uh, just behind me to the North, um, a little bit. So I actually had him at 20 yards when I took the shot. He was no way. A small group of does. Yeah. You worked the entire season to get them within bow range and you, know, you, you go out with your gun and <laughs> comes 20 yards away. So, well, uh, at least this have should have been shot. a pretty easy process from, from then on out though. I would assume. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh with my, with my shotgun, it was just, you know, one shot easy and he, he only went about 50 or 60 yards out in the field and it was a, it was a pretty easy drag out from there. So nice. Let me, uh, you sent me a, uh, a picture of the deer. Let me see if I can bring that up of uh, a trail camera. But when did you get this picture of it? Oh, uh, that was, I believe early November that that had popped up. Okay. So we run quite a few cameras out at this farm. It's more, we, uh, we're pretty picky about, when we go out and check them so i mean 
uh, where I was at. I, like I said, I don't like to disturb the area bordering this field that I was on just because I know they bed through there. They cruise through there a lot and I don't want any scent in there that doesn't need to be. So I kind of like to scout from a distance, see what comes out in that field and um, kind of take some, some recon from uh, the area across the road that's a part of this property and kind of see what can filter into this field from those surrounding areas. Okay. Well, let's get into the deer. So let's, let's see this thing, pull it up. It's like a perfect 10, right? He does. He's a, he's a perfect 10. He's got no junk on him whatsoever. Um, pretty unique character in the fact how, how he wraps around to the front. I mean, it's only a few inches between his tips there on the front. Um, like I said, he's got really nice mass, uh, good time length. His G2s are both over 12 inches. His G3s are um, almost 12 inches. They're both, uh, this one's right around 11 and 7 eighths. And this one, I think, is just right at 11. Uh, like I said, mass is good. It's nothing like dad's deer that he shot. But I was going to say, we just, it wasn't too long ago that we're going through like your no. dad's deer. And like, not the, that deer is awesome. But like, right. you what know, were the measurements? We were talking measurements on your dad's deer. Like, those were nuts. Oh, I mean, this guy, like I said, I, we always classify a good deer, you know, his bases, you know, if they're around five inches and these were, they were, they're right about five inches on his bases and dads were pushing the eight. eight yeah. Eight. So. <laughs> uh, but you know what? Like I said, on trail cam pictures, seeing this guy on the hoof and, you know, finally get my hands on him. We knew he was mature. So I'm, you know, blessed and fortunate that I got the opportunity at him. What, what do you age that deer at? Uh, I think he was, you know, borderline uh, five and a half. You know, he's one of those, since we had limited pictures of him and everything, but seeing the size of his head, uh, his gut, his, his weight and everything, you know, we, I'm pretty sure confident he was five and a half. Nice. Let me, let's see. The out there would like to get him too. Let's see the, uh, the brow ties and the, uh, the mass at the base. I don't, it looked like it was a little, yeah, there you go. Yeah. What did you say they were like five? Yeah, they were about five. Okay. He's got a little junk down there. Yeah. She's got some, you know, some nubs and everything. Um, but like I said, you know, once we got him open, you know, he was, uh, he was scarred up a little bit. He was a fighter, uh, and he'd been burning some fat. So I knew he was chasing some does around for a while. So, uh, like I said, when he popped out, he was with a group of three or four does. So, uh, you know, even though Rut wasn't in full swing at that time, you know, we weren't seeing a lot of chasing. He was at least uh, reading the script in some way that he was, you know, following does out there, which made it a lot easier to, to see him. Cool. So yeah. what's the uh, what's the plan the rest of the season? You have another deer that you're after or are you just kind of floating around? Are you taking a break? What's going on now? Yeah, you know, we just checked uh, cameras on a few farms today and uh, – on most of them, uh, I don't have anything that's mature enough. Like I said, we like to get them to around five and a half on all of our farms. And I don't really have anything on that on a lot of them. But this farm in particular, I'm really excited about. I just sat there during second shotgun season and uh, I saw more than one shooter, a uh, couple of really good ones. So that's encouraging, especially with your muzzle loader. Like I said, most of the time when you see deer in this field, they're they're out of bow range. So no one's yeah. the opportunity to shoot out, you know, 100 yards or farther uh, I'm pretty optimistic and the weather looks good for it. So I think they'll be on food and still lots of corn sitting in this field. So I'm excited. Okay. And that's this week, right? Or this weekend? It is Friday through Sunday this week. So, so what's your schedule? going to hunt all yeah, of it. <laughs> I think there's a pretty good front coming in. Uh, I think it's Friday, Friday night or Saturday night, one of those two. So I think, uh, Saturday looks to be a, a really good day. I think it's going to get down into the teens. Uh, like I said, with, Knowing that, and it uh, looks like it's going to be cold where all these deer are going to definitely should be up on their feet hitting food. So I think anybody who's planning on going out hunting this week, I, I typically, even though I've got a gun, I don't like to hunt mornings. I don't like to spook anything, knowing that they're pretty patternable at this time, you know, ruts over with their basic survival mode now. So I kind of right. like to let things settle down, let them get on their pattern, come out at night to feed in the last, you know, 45 minutes to a half hour. It's usually pretty uh, similar day to day. So I kind of like to let that happen and, you know, just cross your fingers and hope something, you know, decent pops out and you've got a shot at them. Well, that's, I mean, that weather is ideal. I mean, the first, I don't, I hadn't, I haven't heard the numbers yet of first and second shotgun, but I hadn't heard first was okay. Second, it seemed like it was pretty, pretty slow. I didn't hear many I deer not, being shot. I did not hear many shots at all during second season. And, uh, you know, like I said, you learn something. Sometimes it's not so much about going out with the, uh, you know, the expectation to shoot a deer. Sometimes it's more of a, 
you know, you're going on a mission to just kind of see where they're moving. And that's what yeah. it was second season for us, you know, went out a couple of times and I got to see a few shooters, like I said, and just kind of pinpointed where they're moving and where I think they're going to be. And now going into third season, uh, or first this muzzle loader, I think I've got a pretty good game plan. And hopefully we can get a, another good one down. Nice. Okay. Well, give us uh, one more kind of look at the deer. What, give us the rundown on the measurements again. You said it was, uh, what, 11 or 10 G2s? Yeah, the G2s actually are um, right around 12 inches. 12, my bad. Yeah, G3 on the one side is um, almost 12 inches. The other one's almost 11, I believe. And uh, his brow times were about 5 inches. Um, mass measurements on each side, you know, were, uh, you know, five inches at the base, you know, five moving up. He carries his mass pretty evenly throughout. Yeah. Um, I think I ended up, you know, rough scoring him about 100 and 161 and an eighth. Okay. Uh, gross typical. So, uh, like I said, not very wide. He's only like 16 and a half inches wide, which is, you know, where he gets hurt on score a little bit, but his beans are over 24 inches. And, uh, like I said, just a really nice clean deer. Like I said, there's oh, not for a, sure. There's not there's, a, there's something about typical deer that are just, at least to me, and I'm not a, you know, crazy like you and Ryan are, but there's something about a typical eight or 10 to me that just makes a pretty cool mount. Right. Like I said, he's got a pretty, just a pretty cool frame to him, how he wraps around. Yeah. So, you know, when I saw him first come out there, I, I didn't have to think too long uh, before I knew I wouldn't take a shot at him. I knew he was a mature deer and um, yeah, very excited. Yes. Okay. Well, cool. Thanks for joining us. How about uh, let's do it um, early next week after muzzleloader and we'll see what went down. Absolutely. Hopefully got uh, some good news for you. All right. Thanks for joining us, man. We'll talk soon. Sounds good. Thank you. Yes.